Marie. Hi, Kurt. Hey, do the regular and make it snappy. I've got to take an old guy to the hospital. Then maybe I'll call it a day. Say, first, did you hear what happened to Terry? No, what? Well, her Uncle Joe died and left her his entire estate over in Glendale. She had an Uncle Joe. You mean Terry's in the money? Well, not exactly. She phoned a few minutes ago and said she'd be over with the registered letter she got from the lawyer. Well, how big is the estate? According to Terry, it's only a bungalow. A bungalow? Her Uncle Joe might just as well not have died if that's all he left. Well, we'll find out all about it when Terry gets here. Hey, kids! Look! It is now official! I got the letter. I was just telling Bert about the bungalow. Oh, that ain't all. Wait till you get a load of this. Well, I hope you don't have to get married by a certain date or mind the baby before that house is legally yours. It's worse than that, and I ain't kidding. Unquote. A quote. In addition to the aforesaid property, the deceased, Joseph Hilton, bequeathed and assigns unto his niece, Terry Olson, that's me, a ten-ton truck, that ain't me, fully described in paragraph E hereof. Unquote. You'd have been better off, Terry, if he'd just left you 20 bucks. Oh, I'll say, now, wait a minute. After all, we can live in the bungalow. And move to Glendale? Listen. If the bungalow isn't as big as a doghouse, it's bound to be better than that flea bag we're in now. What baffles me is, what am I going to do with a truck? Well, if that sounds crazy, Terry, the truck is probably worth more than the house. When are you going over to Glendale? This afternoon, why? Well, I'll tell you what, I've got one more call to make. It takes me about a half an hour. In the meantime, suppose you get in touch with Pete. Oh, my little Cupid has been out of town now for almost a week. And just where he is seems to be a military secret. Well, your boyfriend drives the truck, too, doesn't he? Sure, Bert? I'll pick up Danny on the way back. And he can give us a lowdown on the truck just like that. Well, hurry! Hey, Marie, when does your relief come on? In about ten minutes. Would you like to go over Glendale with us? Why, well, dear, we can rent rooms. Ah, uh, no, you live down there. That's, that's the truck. Don't be silly. That's the truck. That's the truck. There it is, big boy. Take a look at it and see if it's any good. All right. Oh, you're kidding. Boy, it looks like a sweet job to me. It certainly is big enough. I wonder what he used it for. What are we going to use it for? That's what I'm trying to figure out. Hey! Boy, that's all right. I think you girls have earned the money. What you do with a bus like that? Sure, sell it. But what's it worth? Sell it? That's what I have in mind. Listen, we're doing men's work already, but if you think we're going to drive this monster, you're crazy. Well, why not? You'd all make more money. And I'll show you how crazy my idea is. Now, look. The three of you together make $14 or $15 a day, is that right? Sixteen, so what? With the truck, you're supposed to make $50 a day. Uh, $50 a day? That's right. The truck's worth that much money to get it rolling. Oh, I knew there was a catch in it someplace. To get it rolling, you got to have customers. But that's a pushover these days. If I talk to the boss, you're as good as in the business right now. Listen, if we can make that kind of money, what are you standing there for? Go talk to your boss. We're interested. Girls, are we in the trucking business? It's a whole lot better than what we're doing now. You said it, but will that big lummox deliver? Oh, honey, that's no way to talk. Of course, I don't know what the boss is going to say about women on trucks, but I'll fix it, and you'll be in the huddle with him in the morning. Okay, let's get going. I don't know what to say about women drivers. Then don't say it. I'd be taking an awful chance. Not unless you decided to drive with us. I don't know. It's a tough decision to make. Oh, but listen, boss. I know all our trucks are busy, and you said you could use some more. And how? Why, if your truck was in Las Vegas right now, I could use it for this job. I've got five tons of glycerin waiting to be brought into Los Angeles, and no transportation available. Glycerin? That ain't gunpowder, is it? Not yet, it isn't. But they do make explosives with it. Okay, as long as we don't have to drive back with tons of dynamite. Vegas, I've always wanted to go to Mexico. Las Vegas is in Nevada. Oh, well, anyway, it sounds interesting. If your truck was there, I'd take a chance and tie up this contract. Well, you men, mister, there's nothing stopping us from going to Las Vegas. Oh, yes, there is. There's government regulations. An empty truck isn't allowed on the highway. In other words, you've got to have a full load going and coming. You mean that if we find somebody who wants us to take something to Las Vegas, we're hired? Yes, but that isn't so easy to find. We'll make it easy, no matter how hard it is. Come on, kids. Hey, honey. Where you been? I took a load to Denver. Just got back this morning. Say, Jenny told me all about what your uncle left you. I come over to get the license for Who's going to drive the truck, honey? Me? Who do you think? <laughs> a ten-ton truck? That's an awful big crate. Do you think you can handle it? Oh, don't worry about me, honey. It stops and stops the same as any other car, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah. That there's a slight difference. Mm. But I guess I can show you how to handle it in a couple of days. Okay, let's get that truck license. Oh. Oh, 
this is our busiest month. Well, we'd like a license and make it snappy, please, because we have places to go. Well, that's the first time I ever heard that, and I've been around here a long time. You've uh, chosen a gay little partner. Oh, hardly a partner. She's going to run this thing. Right. Women always do, but most men don't realize it. Your uh, names, please? Uh, Terry Olson. And mine's Pete Dugan. Hmm? Your ages? Uh, uh, I'm old enough to drive a car. That's sufficient, isn't it? Well, I have to know your age. Well, I'm 33. And I'm uh, just put down 20. Hmm. Ever been married before? Why, no. Anything else you'd like to know? Well, it's customary to ask these questions. Oh, I'm sorry. I've never done anything like this before. There you are. <clears throat> That's all there is to it. Now, ah. see you. Two dollars, please. Two dollars? I thought a trucking license was ten dollars. Well, maybe it is, but can't you read? Sure, we can. Marriage? Wait a minute. We don't want a marriage license. You may not want it, but you've got it. And I can't take it back after it's been issued. Well, what are we going to do with it? Well, you better keep it. Looks like you might be needing it one of these days. Now, if you want a trucking license, that's window 12. Window 12. Thanks. Polite, ain't it? Uh, thanks. I only have a little while left to learn how to drive this thing, and I'm due for my test. You think I'll get my driver's license? I don't know. Try shifting again. Shifting? Yeah, shifting. Yeah, shifting. <laughs> uh, uh, you want me to shift? Yeah, shift. Yeah, shift. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah? Yeah, but you ain't shifted yet. Well, you told me when I shifted to put my foot on the clutch, save my foot. Yeah, but your hand ain't on the gear, honey. Yeah, but uh, never mind that. Get on with the lesson. Oh, honey, it's awful hard trying to teach you here. Let's take the truck out on the road. Oh, I'll be all right after a few more lessons. I can just see myself on the road. 30 miles an hour. 40 miles an hour. 40 miles an hour. 50, 50 miles, miles an hour. 60. 60. Oh, honey, you slink too much. Yeah, don't get personal and get on with the lesson. No, I mean, you've got to sit up straight. Oh. Well, now what do we do? Well, try shifting again. All right. Say, don't we ever do anything in this truck but shift? She's been out with that examiner guy for an hour and a half now. Well, maybe we better get the motorcycle cop to look for me. You think he's going to give her a license to drive? Hiya, kid. What a trip. I didn't know we were going to make a tour of the city. We missed nothing. Including the pedestrians. Yes. Yeah. What do you mean the pedestrians all got out of the way in time? Oh, well, maybe she was just a little bit nervous, officer. A little nervous? Why, she ain't got a nerve in her body. I was the one that was nervous. Well, gosh, officer, you're supposed to take a few chances. A few chances? Listen, lady, I've been examining drivers for 15 years, and I've taken some awful chances. But your examination was the worst ordeal I have ever gone through with. You're some driver. You really think so? Oh. Gosh, thanks, pal. I knew it. Looks like you passed. Oh. Yep, she passed all right. But only for one reason. If I didn't pass her, I'd have to go through this all over again. And I have a wife and four kids depending on me. Come on. <laughs> Great sense of humor. Come on. Are you going to Las Vegas, mister? No, and neither are you. Which one of you girls is Terry Olson? That's me, little man. What can I do for you? I'm from the Acme Finance Company. There's a little item of $82 due on your late uncle's truck. You mean the truck has been paid for yet? There's $300 balance due on that truck, and unless this payment is made by next week... And if it isn't? Then I'll have to slap a plaster on the truck. A what? A plaster. It's a legal time. It means you can't move the truck unless our mortgage is satisfied. Sounds like trouble to me. Now, look, mister. I don't want any trouble with you or at me, understand? Listen, we'll pay the $82 when it's convenient. And if you start throwing any plasters around... Well, stick one right on your ride. And she isn't kidding. And I can verify that. Oh, well, now, wait a minute. Girls, you're not figuring on taking that truck to Las Vegas, are you? Who said anything about going to Las Vegas? Well, she did when I came in. Uh-huh. She didn't say anything about taking the truck, did she? Well, well... Uh, oh, okay, did I'm... Uh, I'm wrong, but... All right. But you better not take that truck to Las Vegas. And you better make that payment by next week or else. Ah! Good day. Good day. What's good about it? Gee, if somebody doesn't answer, I... had pretty soon, it looks like the Acme Finance Company is going to be in the trucking business. I have a hunch that all my uncle left me is a flock of headaches. There must be someone, somewhere, who wants something taken to Las Vegas.
Say, I've won a gambling trap in all over the country. Nobody's ever bothered me. Of course, it's slightly different when you use it to clip suckers. Mm -hmm. Uh, you know how to get there, I presume. Well, I have a map and it's following instructions. How can I miss? Okay, I'll drive ahead with the boys and we'll meet you in Las Vegas. Right. Say, if those boys drive the way they load that truck, we'll probably be in Las Vegas before you get there. Well, make it as fast as you can, but you'd better watch those cops, especially in those little towns, because they really enforce that 35 mile an hour law. Why, for goodness sake, the cops are our pals. Come on, kids, let's get going.
Vegas, anyhow. I really don't know, but we'll check on the map. Won't you come in? My butler is off today. You know what the servant problem is, I suppose. Is there anything I can do for you? Is there anything you... It so happens, my dear friend, that you are occupying our truck. How can you call my drawing room a truck? Somebody's crazy, and I don't think it's her. Say, who are you, anyway? She looks a little bit like Cleopatra. Well, who am I, anyway? I really don't know. I attended a dinner at a beautiful mansion. And suddenly I got lost. I couldn't find my way home. But I'm quite sure that this is my drawing room. You uh, mean you really don't know who you are? No. But a name is so unimportant. But those other people at the dinner, don't you remember any of them? No. But if you don't mind, I must speak to my cook about tonight's menu. Excuse me. Of course. She's either putting on a very clever act, or she's got amnesia. Amnesia? I hope that ain't contagious. Well, you better get in your more alone while I put some mileage behind you. You mean we gotta take oh, her she's with probably harmless. Just ask her a lot of questions, and maybe she'll come to and I get going. Can't you remember anything about who you are or where you came from? No, I can't. Well, maybe you can remember where you got all that pretty costume jewelry. Well, I want you to understand that I wouldn't wear costume jewelry, even if I were attending a ball given by the 40 Thieves. Oh, of course. I imagine that ring came from Cartier. And a pen. Well, anyone can see that's a Tiffany design. Can you remember anything about those papers? No, I can't. And I don't particularly care. You see, there's something extremely soothing about getting away from society. I'm quite certain that when I left that dinner party, I must have been bored. Now, oh, everything seems delightfully pleasant. Do you plead guilty? Or maybe you got a funny story to tell me. Well, believe it or not, officer, we were chasing that trucker. Yeah, why? Oh, you tell him, Mo. I'm fed up with this whole situation. We represent the Acme Finance Company. We got a plaster slap on that truck. 62 miles an hour. That's a pretty serious offense in these parts. We were going along nicely at 35 miles an hour. When all of a sudden, Mo spies the truck and he tells me to step on it. Yeah, now you're blaming everything on the truck. Well, if you saw the girls that are driving that wagon, you'd understand. Oh, let's cut out the conversation, please, and give us a ticket. We gotta get possession of that truck. I got the necessary legal papers right here. I'm sorry, but I'll have to take you into the sheriff's office for arraignment. And let that truck get away? I'm not interested in that truck. Come on, turn around here and we'll go back and explain everything to the sheriff. How much of a fine will we have to pay, officer? You'll have to do time. I don't think the sheriff likes the idea of finance companies chasing these clients all over the highway. Well, did you hear that? Well, when we meet the sheriff, will you please keep that big mouth of yours shut and maybe we'll get away with a fine. I'm beginning to think the spider gave me a phony steer. Sure looks that way. If that truck was headed for Las Vegas. We'd have caught up with it before now. Oh, can't be. 
right, Terry. The guy's really anxious. What can we do? I don't know. But if I can make that Nevada border, he's out of luck. Well, I certainly hope she makes the border. It's likely that policeman wants me. Well, what did you do? Stick up the super chief or something? We've had enough trouble already. Oh, I assure you, it's nothing like that. It's just a little family squabble. Now, look, if you're going to get us into trouble, we just as soon give you your money right back and let you all fry here. Oh, no, no, please. It's nothing that can involve any of you. Only a hundred yards to go, kids, and we're safe. I just don't know what we'll do. I certainly wish the spider hadn't called me up. Step on it, will you, buddy? Okay. Who is it? Your girlfriends insisted that you have something to eat. Please thank them for me. Yes, ma'am, I will. Hey. Sound again. Big 
Can't lose. You know, if I knew something about this game, I'd like to try it. It's all very simple. If you make a seven or eleven on the first throw, you win. If you make a point, and you make that point before seven, you win again. Sounds like a winning game. When do you lose? Oh, we'll let you know. We won't let you go wrong. Why don't you try? Well, I think I will. Thanks. Okay, boys, wish me luck. Uh, uh, two dollars. Aren't you afraid it's you? All right. All I do now is roll them, huh?
I wish I did. Well, frankly, I don't get it. Never make it. Guess I'll look in the book and see if it's in the book. Do something. Wait a minute. <laughs> What'd you do? Well, I just turned the key and stepped on the thing. And according to the sheriff's office, the beautiful daughter of millionaire Robert Bendix leaped from the super chief yesterday afternoon near the California-Nevada border. While her father admits he tried to prevent the contemplated marriage of his daughter to Thomas Higgins, an engineer with the Boulder Dam Project, he's anxious to effect a reconciliation with his daughter and has offered a reward of $5,000. And no questions asked to anyone who locates Doris Bendix and communicates with the millionaire manufacturer. And that, ladies and gentlemen, winds up our newscast until 5 p.m. this evening. This is K.Y. This is the same gal that they are talking about on the radio. What are you talking about? Uh, that's the gal. Uh, there she is. This is what girl? Uh, the gal that them other gals had in the truck. I served a dinner last night and breakfast this morning. You sure? Well, I'm positive. Let's go, Dave. for a girl. You thought maybe you might have seen her in this vicinity. There's her picture. That's the gal. She was here last night, but left a few minutes ago in a big truck with some other girls heading for Las Vegas. A few minutes ago? Yes. Well, thanks a lot. Come on. Hmm. Let's see what goes on. Say, have you seen anything of a 10-ton truck passing this way with some girls in it? It seems that everybody is looking for them gals. That truck left here a few minutes ago. Had five girls in it. That's them, thanks. Them gals sure is popular. I tell you, Terry, that's her. Well, maybe you're right, but we'll find out all about her first we stop for coffee. Funny thing, Sam. That woman who tells fortunes told me last night there was going to be a lot of excitement centered right around me here in this lobby. You know, I thought she was kind of crazy, but I guess she knows that crystal ball. Seems that way, Tony, Sam. You know my wife, don't you? Can't say that I do, Mr. North, but... She's uh, been missing several days. A motorcycle officer at the California border told me he saw a lot of women in a huge truck, and that one of them resembled Mrs. North. Well, not knowing your wife, Mr. North, I couldn't... I have a snapshot of her. She disappeared mysteriously from a banquet at the governor's house. Well, she was here, too. Well, yes. That's the woman they said had amnesia. Where is she now? Your wife, Mr. North, was with four other girls. They stayed here last night. They left here early this morning in a big truck. Said they were going to Las Vegas. Las Vegas? Yes. How long ago did they leave? Oh, about a half an hour ago. You can easily catch up with them. Thanks, Toby. Hey, you know who that is? No, sir, but he sure looks important. He's a millionaire rancher. Used to be a state senator. Hmm. Shortcut Tito's about. Well, that's Marie. She's got the map back there. Hey, Marie, look at the map and see if there's a shortcut penciled in right where we are now. The shortcut is the road to the right. It's not right here on the map. Thanks, Mel. Girls, I think the road we took is disastrous. However, I shall check that conclusion. Oh, don't you think it'd be a little safer to follow the road map? My and crystal is infallible. If we take the right road, we cannot go wrong. No wonder I don't know who I am. Si, that was a swell idea, getting that warrant. Of course, Tony would have gotten us all jammed up. You know, if we grabbed that Bendix girl without the warrant, she could have brought charges against us for kidnapping or something. I think she would have. This way, we've got nothing to worry about. 
We'll get the money back that we lost and the 5,000 reward. That's not going to be hard to take, Si. Well, here comes Tony now. I wonder if you got in touch with old man Bendix. Well, boys, as long as we're splitting the reward, it's only fair that we should split the expenses. That call cost me six dollars. Come on, hand over your share. I finally reached Mr. Bandage in Chicago. He's flying in. Should be here by seven in the morning. In the morning? That means we'll have to get a conviction, sir. Oh, Charlie Yates will convict tomorrow. Nevertheless, it'll be safer if the prosecutor gets a postponement until tomorrow. Yeah, you can try. But I don't think we have a thing to worry about. You know, Dave's right. If they're acquitted, there's no way that we can hold our Bendix until the father gets here. Ah, uh, they're safe to be convicted. We want to get bailed out! Yes, what are we in for? Yeah, I'm trying to come back. We want to make a phone call. Now, just a minute. Yes, but you can't put us in jail. Yeah, like you this. can't put us in We are in jail. But what are we in for? As to what you're in for, I haven't seen the complaint. But I can assure you it's a very serious offense. Now, according to law, however, you are entitled to make one phone call. So get together and tell me who's going to make it. Okay, come on, kids, this is important. Whoever we phone, we have to get, because we're only allowed one call. That's right, so who can we reach? The sense Danny and Peter are on the road somewhere. Oh, they're probably on their way to San Francisco. No, I still want to know what we're in for. Well, I'd call my husband if I knew who he was. Yeah, that's what Gilbert would do. If he did get him, you couldn't tell him who was calling. Hey, Sappy, don't you know anybody besides that crystal bowl? Why, yes, I do. Well, who? I could call on the spirit. Oh, no, that's long distance. Well, that's right. They might not be in yet. Girls, I think I have a solution. You do? Then don't stand there and let us rock in jail. What is it? Why don't we call my fiancé a boulder dam? He's an engineer. An engineer, that's fine. We need a lawyer. Well, since her boyfriend seems to be the only one we can reach, why don't we start dialing that number? All right. Hey, Pop, go ready for that call. Say, what's his name? Tommy Jones. That's what? What's his right name? Tommy. Yeah? Yeah? What? In jail? I read that Toodles jumped off the train, but I can hardly believe... Toodles? Who's Toodles? Well, that's my nickname for Doris. Oh, that's very cute. Yeah. Well, you better get yourself right over here and get Toodles and the rest of us out of this clink. All right, I'll be over there as soon as I can make it. Hey. Hey, wake up! <laughs> Time to take me back. Over this way. This honorable court of River County, Nevada, is now in session. Judge Higginbottom presiding. The state of Nevada versus Terry Olson, Bert Benson, Marie Smith and three Jane Doe's, who are charged with violation of Section 1282 of the Criminal Code of the State of Nevada. Everything but murder, he said. To wit, that they severally and individually conspired with each other to maliciously and deliberately defraud one Dave Watson, one Cy Haskell, and one Tony Galento out of monies and jewelry be a game commonly known as craps, using dice, known in the parlance of gambling circles as toppers. That's a lie, Judge. Quiet. Continue with the charges. It is further charged that... I tell you, Danny, that looked like the dame struck back there. Ah, oh, he didn't get a good look at it. Uh, you remember, we told him to take this shortcut. Well, that's their truck there in the clink. It was parked outside the jailhouse. Yeah, that's why I think we ought to go back. <laughs> Say, buddy, have you seen the girls that were driving that truck? Yep. Well, where are they? In there. In, in there. there? Yep, they got themselves in the jam. They're in there being tried right now for Judge Higginbottom. We arrested five girls over in River County yesterday for fraud, and one of them answered to the general description of this Doris Bendix you're looking for. How far is River County Jail from here, officer? About 30 miles back. Thanks a lot. Your Honor, I 
I didn't see any of the defendants win any money because I spent the night in the truck. Then you were never in the motel? No, Your Honor. Uh, see here, Judge. I can prove very easily that everything the prosecutor has said about the dice being crooked is so much hooey. And how do you propose to prove that, young lady? Tommy. Toodles. Just where do you think you are, young man? Oh, I'm sorry, Judge. You'd better get back to spectators before I find you for contempt of court. Yes, sir. I'll see you later, darling. Your Honor, just prior to this little romantic episode, Miss Olson was going to disprove all my allegations. That'll be all. All right, young lady, you may proceed. Thank you, Judge. I will. All right, now let me have those dice. Uh, which two do you want me to use? Right. Your Honor, we won $471 and that man's ring. Now I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll let anyone roll the dice and bet all we've won against $1. Quiet. All right, clear the court. While this young lady's suggestion is rather uh, unique, it does, in my mind, indicate good faith on the part of the defendant and her associates. What do you say, Mr. Prosecutor? Shall we accept the young lady's proposal? Your Honor, we expect to. And we shall prove that those dice will win for anyone who rolls them. Sire, will you do the honors? You betcha. Yes, sir. There you are. Now, Your Honor, we've won $471. Now, let's see how many dice you have. The defendant's portion of his bargain is in the custody of this court. Oh, that's uh, just a minute. Uh, Mr. Prosecutor, there is no doubt that these dice are the identical dice used by the defendant when she won all that money? None whatsoever. Uh, you may proceed. Uh, what does two sixes mean? It means that he lost. And when I said the prosecutor was full of baloney, I was right. <laughs> Young lady, I must warn you not to use such language in this court. I'm sorry, Judge, but now you know I'm right. I certainly do. Case dismissed. And here's your dollar. The bailiff will return to you the money's held as Exhibit A. Yeah, that we're into money. Oh, boy. We're into money, huh? Danny! Where? <laughs> Darling, where have you been? Well, who is this man? But, oh, my darling, don't you know me? I'm your husband. Well, I never saw you before in my life. Just a minute, have you got that license? Yeah, sure. Oh, Judge, just one more favor, yeah. please. What is it? Uh, can you marry people? I can if they have a license. We, we have. have. Well, you'll need two witnesses. I'll get them in a minute. Now, don't go away. Uh, let me see your license, please. <laughs> Come on, kids, I'm going to get married. I need a couple of witnesses. Terry. This gentleman here is her husband. Husband? Yes, but she doesn't know me. Oh, I'm so sorry. You know, she's been that way ever since we picked her up. Uh, Clark, get me a marriage certificate. You'll find a pad of them in my chamber. Doctors sometimes claim that a sudden shock will do it. Mm, well, gosh, I hope she's not out of it. Honor, we have a license to marry. Can you perform the ceremony? What, you too? Uh, what is this? This started out to be a criminal case, and now I'm playing Cupid. Is there anyone else who'd like to get married? Hey, first, Danny, come on. Maybe we can get a discount. Tommy, put your that license in the next building. Judge, hold everything. We'll be right back. All right. Mark, get two more marriage certificates. Ah, it's no use, we're stuck. I don't know how we're going to explain this to Mr. Bendix, and we haven't a chance of earning that $5,000 reward. Well, try it again and see if you can get the thing fixed. All right, I'll do the best I can. And I now pronounce you man and wife. Baby! Oh, that's just wonderful. Congratulations. Thanks, Carrie. Oh. Carrie, I insist your honeymoon is on me. 
to recall what happened at the governor's banquet. Uh, this may work and it may not, but uh, here goes. Jim, darling. Regina. <laughs> Tell her. I just got married. Regina, oh, I'm so glad. Mm -hmm. 